Hi everyone, welcome to the Machine Learning Meetup. I'm Martin Goodson from the sponsors of the Meetup Evolution AI. And today our guest speaker is Guan Yun Kim from Seoul National University, who's going to be talking to us about Diffusion Clip. Um, as usual, uh, Guan Yun will be speaking for 40 minutes and then we'll have a QA session. And today it's going to be moderated by Alessio, um, another, another colleague of mine from Evolution AI. Um, but right now, um, I'm going to hand over to Guan Yun. Uh, as usual, please use the QA function to put your questions in. Uh, as we go through the talk, just, just jot down any questions into the QA function. Don't use the chat, just use the QA. Uh, and then we'll get to the questions during the, uh, during the discussion. Uh, so over to you now, Guan Yun. Thank you. OK, hi, guys. Um, good evening. Um, I'm Guan Yun Kim. Um, from Seoul National University, and I'm going to present our work, Diffusion Clip, Text Guided Diffusion Models for Robust Image Manipulation, which was accepted to CUPR this year. Before diving into the main contents, I will briefly introduce myself. Um, I am now a first year PhD student in electrical and computer engineering at Seoul National University advised by Professor Seung Chan. And my recent research focuses on designing deep generative models for solving complicated and challenging problems such as multimodal applications, video, and 3D scene. My another research interest is to tackle various real world safety problems. Especially I have mainly focused on training generalizable models to be robust under unseen environments and developing effective pri privacy preserving distributed learning. I have four publications like this now. So if you are more interested in me, uh, please visit my homepage. And from now on, I'm, I'm gonna firstly introduce Diffusion Clip, uh, followed by the overviews of recent uh, trends in Diffusion models for vision language tests. Diffusion Clip was done with Zhong Chorye and Taesong Kwon when I was a master's student at KAIST. And it was accepted to CVPR and become popular in GitHub and Reddit machine, machine learning communities, and also invited to KCCV oral session. And Glide and Imagine, which are the recent hardest text to image generative models, cited our papers. In this work, we deal with a text-driven image manipulation test. The manipulated image should highly correspond to the target text, as well as preserve identities without unintended changes. Also, the framework should support diverse types of text prompt and diverse types of um, image domains. For this, several works are proposed, but require a large number of annotated sets of image text and manipulated images. Recently, to overcome these issues, um, clip and gun inversion methods are combined. In clip, a text and image encoder are trained to identify which texts are matched with which images in the data set. And gun inversion is the method for uh, finding a latent vector corresponding to an input image, a given pre-trained gun generator. Combine this, Cyclip performs image manipulation by updating the inverted latent vector, minimizing cosine distance between clip embeddings of the generated output and target text. It shows remarkable results, but its manipulation is limited to only in-domain manipulation and has mode collapse issues where all the images for one target text is converted to representative image of the target text. And it its real image manipulation is limited due to limited gun inversion performance. To resolve the issues, StarGun Nara, which updates StarGun Generator, minimizing cosine distance between clip embeddings, is introduced. Also, it adopts directional clip loss, which is, uh, which, uh, is robust to uh, mode collapse issues. However, its manipulation is still limited due to limited gun inversion performance. In detail, 
Uh, even the state of the art inversion methods fail to recon reconstruct images with novel poses and details and reconstruct images from a data set with high variance, such as church images and image in a data set generating distorted manipulation results. To overcome these issues, here we propose diffusion clip, a clip guided robust image manipulation method by diffusion models, which shows high quality image synthesis as well as a near perfect reconstruction performance between latency and images. Diffusion models are a type of generative models consisting of a forward process and reverse diffusion process. In detail, the forward process is a fixed markup chain with Gaussian transition, where noise is gradually added to the data with the predefined noise schedule. The reverse process is uh, also a Markov chain with another Gaussian transition where the sample is iteratively denoised. Here, the denoising step is parameterized by neural network because it is intractable. For training, we can form variational upper bound that is commonly used for training variational autoencoders. And this upper bound can be factorized like this. As these two uh, distributions are normal distributions, the k divergence um, between these two distributions has a simple form. In practice, a noise prediction model, um, epsilon, is trained with following objectives rather than predicting the mean directly. The lambda t part ensures maximum likelihood training, but others of the DPM such as setting lambda as one, which improves um, um, sam sample quality. And for training, a given noise image and time input, the model is optimized by minimizing the distance between added noise and predicted noise. And for sampling from the Gaussian noise, the image is generated through iterative denoising processes. Diffusion models often use unit architectures with resonant blocks and self-attention layers to represent residual noise epsilon. Diffusion model shows a great mod covers and diversity as well as high fidelity of generated samples, but it requires more time to generate, generate samples that, than other generative models. In DDI paper. Um, I'm sorry to interrupt, but I've just uh, noticed that there's a question from the audience, to, or, or just a comment from the audience that that you're. Um, it's quite difficult to hear you. I think if you speak closer to the microphone, then it can be more consistent with the audio. Okay, so you mean that um, I I need to speak more loudly, right? Well, I think sometimes it's quiet and sometimes it's loud. I'm not sure. It could be that you're moving away from the uh, microphone. So maybe if you just okay. sit close to the microphone, it could be could be good. Okay, thank you. Okay, I will. I will. Thank you. Okay. So in DDIM paper, the deterministic sampling process is proposed. We adopt the deterministic DDIM forward and reverse process to guarantee near perfect reconstruction between latent and images. In diffusion clip fine tuning, the input image is first converted to the latent with pre trained models. Then, guided by the clip loss, the diffusion model at the reverse path is fine tuned to generate samples driven by the target text. We use the following objectives composed of directional clip loss, which is robust to mode collapse issues, and identity loss. To accelerate the fine tuning and inference procedures, we first perform the forward diffusion up to T0 smaller than the last time step. We can further accelerate the procedures by using fewer discretizing steps. We can choose two types of fine tuning stretches. In per generation, per generation optimization, the optimization step is taken whenever the clean sample is generated after the last diffusion step. On the other hand, 
in per step optimization, the optimization step is taken every diffusion step. They have trade off between GPU uses and optimization speed. In practice, if several latent factors are, have been pre computed, we can further reduce the time for fine tuning by recycling the latent to synthesize other attributes. So we first pre compute latent and next we'll update the diffusion models. Once the diffusion model is fine tuned, an image from the pre trained domain can be manipulated through four DDIM with original pre trained domain models, uh, followed by reverse DDIM with fine tuned diffusion models. Qualitatively, our method shows outperforming results compared to the state of the art GAN inversion based baselines. Just to let you know, Gonya, there still does seem to be a bit of a problem with your microphone. It's not, it does seem to be going louder and softer. It could just be the internet between here and Korea. <laughs> maybe, it may be an issue with the connection, but, but just so you know, uh, there is a bit of a difficulty in, in understanding. Uh, really? Okay. So you mean that the network connection, is, it is a problem network? Uh, I don't know what is causing the problem, but um, yeah, the volume is going up and down. Sometimes some words are much quieter than others, so it's a little bit difficult to, to hear. Uh, if you have another microphone, I would uh, try that. Uh, if you don't have another microphone, then don't worry. I think we, are, we, we, we should continue and you should just maybe try to speak slowly um, so that we can, we can, get, mm. we can work, work around that. Okay, and I will change the microphone with, and I will try it. Wait a second. Sorry. I just noticed that we have had a comment. Um, thanks, thanks for that, Ted, saying that um, the volume uh, for that person in the audience has been fine. So I've, I've had a mixture of different comments from different audience members, so I'm not sure why there's a difference, but I don't think it's a severe problem, so I wouldn't worry too much. We should just uh, keep going. Okay, can you hear me? Yeah, much better, I think. How much better? Okay, that's good. Thank you. Okay. Thanks for the comments from everyone. Mm -hmm. Okay, then, okay, I will start from this part. Okay. Um, so <clears throat> once the diffusion model is fine-tuned, any image from the pre-trained domain can be manipulated through four DDIM with original pre-trained models followed by reverse DDIM with fine-tuned diffusion models. Qualitatively, our method shows outperforming results compared to the state-of-the-art GAN inversion-based baselines. Specifically, GAN inversion method failed to manipulate based images with novel pauses, producing distorted results. Furthermore, in the case of church images, the manipulation results can be rec recognized as the results from different buildings. On the contrary, our reconstruction results are almost perfect, uh, even with fine details and background, which enables faithful manipulation. Quantitatively, diffusion based reconstruction shows superior performance to Sotagan inversion baselines. Also, in the human study results, manipulated images using diffusion clip were preferable. Furthermore, from the non-subject evaluation measures, a diffusion clip demonstrated high attribute correspondence and well-preserved identities without unintended changes. Diffusion clip 
moves a step forward to general tax-driven manipulation, enabling manipulation in various domains, including dog face, bedroom, and even extremely widely varying image net. We can even translate the image from an unseen domain into another unseen domain, bridging two domains. Furthermore, by combining the noise predicted from several fine-tuned models, uh, multiple attributes can be changed simultaneously through only one sampling process and also enable in interpolation of certain attributes smoothly. We checked the reconstruction results, uh, varying the number of four different steps and generative steps. We confirmed that when four different steps and generative steps are 40 and six, the reconstruction performance is enough for fine tuning and quick manipulation. We also checked manipulation results depending on return step T0. In case of skin color changes, 300 is enough. However, in the case of changes with severe sharp shape changes such as pizza, requires stepping back more as T0 equal to 500 or 700. So we set different T0 depending on the attributes. So this is the conclusion. Um, we propose diffusion clip, a method of text guided image manipulation method using the pre-trained diffusion models and clip dots. Thanks to the near perfect inversion pro property, Diffusion Clip has shown excellent performance for both in-domain and out-of-domain manipulation by uh, fine-tuning diffusion models. Our method takes another step towards general application by manipulating images from a widely varying ImageNet dataset. Finally, our zero-shot translation between unseen domains and multi-attribute transfer can effectively reduce the manu manual intervention. The next part is, um, I will briefly introduce recent trends in diffusion models for vision language tasks. Recently, diffusion models have succeeded in super high quality image generation from the text. So this task can be formulated as conditional generation like this. For this important, for this important technique such as classifier guidance and classifier free guidance, and, ca and cascaded generations are utilized. For conditional generation, uh, we, can con we can train conditional diffusion models for, uh, by including condition as input to reverse process. Or we can use the gradient of uh, tra trained classifier as guidance during the sampling uh, with pre-trained unconditional diffusion models for conditional generation. <clears throat> we can also um, classifier free guidance by getting guidance by base rules on conditional diffusion models. For text, gu text guided image generation, we can use clip guidance by replacing the classifier in classifier guidance with a clip model. Or we can fine tune pre trained unconditional diffusion models with a, a clip guidance as our, our, um, our research. And cascaded generation enables to generate samples with higher fidelity. It uses base diffusion models and super resolution diffusion models. From now, I will overview um, 10 research works about diffusion models for vision language tests very briefly. A click guided diffusion, which is the first work which utilizes diffusion models for vision language tests. It enables text driven image generation with click guidance and open AI's unconditional image diffusion models. And diffusion clip, um, our work perform image manipulation by fine tuning pre-trained on conditional diffusion models with clip guidance. 
and latent diffusion, also known as stable diffusion, where conditional diffusion models on latent space of perceptual compression autoencoder is proposed. Glide, which utilizes cascading conditional diffusion and classifier free guidance, are presented. Glide output from Stali 1, uh, which was state of the art model until um, last year. And next, Dali 2, where conditional diffusion model is used for prior and decoder network. Prior networks produce clip image embeddings condition on the caption. And decoder produce uh, images condition on clip image embeddings and text. Cascading diffusion and classifier free guidance are utilized for Dali 2. The results were really amazing, like this, a woman sitting in the nature in the side of the Mona Lisa and like and other two pictures. Next, um, retrieval argumented diffusion models where conditional diffusion model that is trained with similar visual features required um, to clip and from the neighbors in external data set is proposed. And next, imagine um, conditional diffusion model using large pre-trained language models as text encoders are proposed. The others, uh, several findings are a uh, scaling text encoder size is extremely effective, more and um, more important than scaling the diffusion model. And also large pre-trained pre text encoder works better than clip embeddings and so and other techniques. With large text encoders, it shows the state of the art wizards. Um, understanding um, text more, um, yeah, more. And DIVAE, where BQBA um, autoregressive prior and diffusion encoder are combined, are proposed this year. Gar and his colleagues proposed interesting work, textual inversion, which generate specific concepts like personal objects or art artistic styles by describing them using U word in the embedding space of pre trained text to image models. It optimizes the embedding vector op um, associated. Um, with uh, our pseudo word, uh, something, something. Dream Boost, which performs the same task but fine tune diffusion model for the personal object rather than optimizing um, the token embedding. At, yeah. And these results are also, are awesome and looks really useful for various applications. And this is concluding remarks. And um, I also prepared um, several parts about, okay, societal effects. Okay, I'll briefly introduce societal uh, limitations and risk, risks of, about this. Um, if some models for vision language test, because uh, we I have more, more more time. Okay. Um, well, we can see that Dali two and Imagine shows really promising results, but there are uh, several limitations and risks. Um, so we can find a sep that several parts. Um, in um, in with Dali two, so. Um, in social, social, um, social aspects, there is a biases and stereotypes. So if 
uh, when the problem is non-specific, only two free country portrays persons and environments as white or Western. Additionally, it, it incorporates gender stereotypes. And these types issues are same for our types of visual language text, including my work diffusion clip. So yeah, this can be the this can be uh, the issues. Also impeding um, or um, manipulation um, through my mother um, might be used to add or delete individuals or items after which one could threaten or hurt others. And, and now the users can, could easily generate a visual synonym with the prompt, a pot of her sleeping uh, in a pool of crimson wicket as il illustrated below. Mm. Even if the violent content restriction of OpenAI prohibited prompts like a dead horse in a pool of blood. So, mm. so for commercial, um, commercial application, so this can be a more, um, more discussed. And DALI2 and our um, model can be used to deceive or inform people about actual events taking place there. And in technical as aspects, um, DALI2 and Diffusion Clip and other visual language text uh, borders has limitations. So first one is inhuman co co incoherence. There are moments um, when coherence is lacking in a way that human creation would never be missing. So in case of these two um, readers, um, this part is um, this part is not um, not good as our human creation part. And spelling part as also Dali two or um, um, the models before imagine um, shows poor results about spelling, but imagine which use uh, large text encoders and it overcomes uh, several issues about spelling. So these issues are um, now, now serving. And also there are the limit of intelligence. So it uses a, a lot of the text encoders. So it uses a lot of information in text encoders and it runs very uh, good relations between um, um, text and images, but also it is like um, just, um, just mimicking, um, the, mimicking the information in data sets. So sometimes uh, these kinds of the information uh, intelligence are, um, now remitted. Okay. So concluding remarks is like this. So diffusion models have become a powerful class of generative models, achieving astounding results in high fidelity image synthesis, even surfacing guns. Yes. And diffusion clip, a text guided image manipulation method using the pre-trained diffusion models and clip loss has shown excellent performance for both in-domain and out-of-domain manipulation, thanks to the near-perfect inversion. And diffusion models, together with the power of transformer and large scale of networks and data sets, has shown us um, astonishing performance for visual language applications. Okay, thank you. And yeah, thank you for your attention. And this, that's all I prepared today. Thank you so much, Jan, for the lovely talk. And also, thanks for the overview of the literature. I think that was really, really helpful uh, and really interesting to, to, to us. Uh, I'm going to hand over now to Alessia, um, who will be conducting the, the QA um, session. And I'd like to invite the audience to please uh, add any of your questions to the QA function and we'll read them without your questions. Um, also, if you want to hold, if you want to ask your question yourself, please hold up your hand and we'll unmute you so you can answer your own question. But um, uh, yeah, please go ahead and do that. And I'm gonna hand over to Alessia now. Hello, um, uh, thank you mm -hmm. for a very interesting talk. Um, mm -hmm. I uh, have a 
a few questions. The first one is um, maybe a, a bit technical, but so um, the diffusion model seems to be uh, outperforming uh, other models, like for example, GANs in, in a lot of uh, contexts as you've shown. Uh, do you have any insight on why that is the case? What are the limitations of GANs that diffusion models don't have, or maybe it's the completely, a completely different approach that is more suitable to the task for uh, any reason? As someone who doesn't work in this in this area, I don't uh, like any uh, insight mm -hmm. that you have would be mm -hmm. uh, very interesting. Okay, I think um, I think. Um, diffusion models shows very um, good results, and we can simply think like this. And so, GAN is like um, generating images from one um, noises, one latent vector. So, um, noise vector to uh, image, and this uh, this problem is, um, I think, it is really hard problem. But in diffusion models. So this this uh, problem is um, um, separate to um, many steps. So um, so so um, one shot for uh, one shot generation from embedding to image is really hard. But um, um, noisy um, noisy image uh, from noisy image to a little bit denoised image. Is this kinds of the um, test is um, a bit a bit more easier easier than the the gun part. So I think this is um, very good insight for why diffusion models are very nice. So um, if the capacity, the model capacity and um, GPU says are uh, limited in limited setting, it is if it is not infinite. Um, diffusion model can um, recycle um, or more uh, recycle again, again, again the model's compass capacity, and the problem is more um, more easier. So uh, it can um, it is very nice to beneficial to uh, generate very high fidelity samples. But yeah, but but the limitation is or it is the sampling speed. So um, gone. And just can 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 generate samples by just one evaluation of neural network, one um, decoder part. But so it takes some milliseconds like that. But for diffusion models, it requires um, um, in for original diffusion models, it requires about one thousand steps. So it it means that one thousand evaluation of um, net, your networks are um, required, so um, it is very slow. But uh, many, many um, good research are proposed. So nowadays, about um, I think twenty steps are very good for generating high fidelity images. So yeah, so I think the um, diffusion models can generate high fidelity images in and in the same settings of the your um model capacity but it um it has its limitation is the sampling speed so right, um, can right. This, uh, yeah. so so it's so it's essentially the gun uh, guns do it in one step diffusion model takes many steps so it kind of mm -hmm. trade off uh time yeah with, that's right yeah uh better quality okay okay uh, that's mm -hmm. interesting um mm -hmm. And so um, there are kind of many uh, popular uh, approaches that use uh, diffusion. Uh, one of the latest one that was uh, that that became viral was stable diffusion. Uh, but but mm -hmm. uh, as as you showed, there are uh, many of them, starting from uh, Dali to Imogen, etc. Et um, mm -hmm. How do uh, how do they compare in terms of methodology to your work? Is um, is what you propose something alternative mm -hmm. to what they do, or is it something that can be uh, applied on top of that? Uh, and if, if if so, what what extra what, what extra 
capability does it provide? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, actually, my work, as I as I introduced, um, uh, my work is done about last year, last um, last October. So, yeah, it is um on prior work to um latent diffusion or a uh, latent diffusion are I think it is con concurrent work and but imagine and Dali two are um, the later works than later work to me our work so they cited my paper and and the main main different part is that um Dali two and imagine and um, stable diffusion also they require um require training diffusion models with very large uh, text and text image pair data set so um it it has about um it has about 400 million or 5 billion um, pairs and it requires really um a large um very it requires a long time to train this model and it requires a lot of um gpus so it i think this is really hard but uh, my model is oh, i can use just a pre-trained clip and diffusion models um pre-trained diffusion models and pre-trained clip encoders so um at at the time i i i'm doing my research at the time i can i just at the moment i do the research uh, uh, I think I don't need to uh, fine tune. I don't need to train uh, these models, these models for image manipulation for a long time. But I just can fine tune these models with click guidance. So it takes just one to seven minutes for one um, attribute. So it is very cheap and very kind of very um, efficient, uh, efficient method for um, image manipulation. So I think this is. Uh, main advantages of my research, um, but um, yeah, but the later works requires um, um, right. They yeah, they yeah. they have much bigger model and so they require much right. yeah. uh, mm -hmm. high uh, computational resources, uh, as That's it right. often the case. Uh, okay, um, thank you. Um, and now, uh, what what's the future for for this what do you think that uh so do you think that um we have exploited everything that we can for diffusion uh, models or do you think there are areas where uh this could be applied as well uh, on top of uh what's done now with um image generation by a text or mm -hmm. What, what, what do you think are promising future research directions for mm. uh, this area? Yeah, I think okay, as you said, um, yeah, Savory Diffusion and Dali2 imagine are really popular now and they show a really um, uh, awesome results and and so now i think there are several the future directions um for research and um first one is we can use um we can use these powerful decoders so um these decoders is this decoder from so we can generate the images very very High quality of images from the latent vector, so latent uh, latent vector or random random text now. So, and and these decoder, these diffusion decoders are, I I think it is the the state of the art and very it is the the most the strongest strongest decoder um as as um, so well, we can use these parts so. This research are really interesting from this dream boost from Google. And in this uh, research, um, we can see that um, by just, we just training um, text to image generation models, but this, this decoder understand very 
complex um, intelligence like 3D part or um, something. So we can use this powerful decoder for um, 3D uh, inform uh, extracting 3D information or the segmentation like this. So um, and 3D information part is um, extracting 3D information part from um, um, unsuper uh, by un unsupervised setting is really hard. And, um, and this part is also very uh, hot, hardest with uh, NERF or like other models, but um, I think um, Google or other um, groups, I think they are doing with this with the 3D 3D information or or we can use this decoder to um to this very smart decoder to other auxiliary applications. Um I cannot um I cannot tear um imagine on um, many tests but so we can use these proper decoders to other tests and and other other ideas is that there are now um, limitations, um, even though the, the results are really nice. So, and textual explanation, sometimes they has limitations. So um, it is really hard to uh, explain um, the locations directly or, um, or very higher intelligence like mathematics or like that. So. Um, I think use this very good prior, uh, this, um, this decoder as very good prior to do this more uh, high level of intelligence. So I think, I think these kinds of two research directions can be promising. Okay, okay, thank you. Um, that's, right. that's very interesting. Mm -hmm. Uh, thank, th thank you very much. I, I think that um, um, we don't have any questions now from the audience. So I, I think um, Alessio, if it's okay with you, it would be a good time to, to close. Yeah, yeah, it's okay. Great, great. Thank you um, so much for your, for your talk and for giving us an overview of the of the field. Yon, it, it was mm -hmm. a kind of view and we really appreciate it. Uh, thanks to everyone in the audience. The, as all of our uh, talks this talk has been recorded and it's available on our YouTube channels so you can just google for um, London machine learning meetup or, um, YouTube to, to take a look again uh, and all of our talks are on there all of our previous talks so thanks once again to our speaker and uh, see you all again next time and thanks to Alessia for, for running the QA thanks again bye 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 okay thank you for your attention bye bye